Good evening and welcome to the coffee bar in my home. I am Joseph Brewer and tonight will be part two discussing my book on church ushers and greeters, um, a practical guide for church ushers and greeters. Uh, this will be a series of discussions regarding my book and let's go ahead and get started for tonight. So one of the things that uh, I've noticed over the years is shaking hands, how important shaking hands is. And in this situation as a greeter or an usher, um, you're not trying to establish dominance. You're not trying to establish social status or pat somebody down. Um, what you're trying to do is begin um, basically begin building a rapport with that person, even if it's just for that day, um, that first opportunity that you had to greet somebody, it's, it's that opportunity to begin that moment. And, and it may begin the relationship fresh, um, you, you know, in, in the moment. So your handshake with somebody is very important. So um, do pay attention to that. It, it should be firm but not bone crushing. It shouldn't be limp. Um, and look the person in the eye, smile uh, when you shake their hand and greet them. Um, it's, it's one of the things that uh, my wife has frequently mentioned to me over the last 25 years of me ushering and, um, and greeting is different people and their handshakes. And, and she'll mention to me that I might need to uh, coach some younger person on shaking hands because they were, uh, it was bone crushing or it was too limp or something like that. And so as a woman, and she noticed those things and would mention them to me. So um, something else to also keep in mind is, unless it's a woman that you shake hands with on a regular basis, I suggest you wait for the woman to extend her hand uh, before extending yours. And some women are uncomfortable with men touching them at all. And even shaking hands, uh, it, it bothers them. So allow the woman to extend her hand to you if it's not somebody you shake hands with all the time, or if it's not somebody that uh, you're very familiar with. So um, give her the opportunity uh, to make that move and then shake her hand. Um, one of the things we've also noticed over the years is that a handshake with somebody is also very telling. And it's actually our first check with uh, new visitors. So we had a guy walk up and uh, one of our deacons was trying to get the guy's attention and the guy was just kept blowing him off blowing him off and the deacon went over to shake his hand and the guy said nobody touches god's anointed well um that guy's probably gonna be a problem for you if you let him in so we if you don't shake hands and if you don't uh act normal when you're shaking hands you're not going to get in my auditorium it's, it's proven to us that those people will be an issue or could potentially be an issue. Um, I watched somebody else that uh, um, he, somebody went to shake his hands and he slid gloves over his hands so that I uh, couldn't actually touch him. And uh, the guy ended up, well, the guy ended up being a problem. So um, anyway, use the handshake as your first engagement with somebody to find out, um, is this person acting a, like a normal rational person would act when you shake their hand or are they uh, being weird? Now, when people are sick, they don't wanna shake hands. So if somebody says, I'm sick uh, and I'm trying not to share, and you know, cool, uh, and you know, don't, don't worry about that. And, COVID, of course, that did change things, but uh, we're post-COVID, and um, even during COVID, I still shook hands with people that were willing to shake hands. Um, it, it's such an important part of our day and, and our culture and, and greeting each other. 
uh, in my ushers meeting, even if somebody um, shows up a couple of minutes late, I, I'm willing to stop what I'm saying for an, a moment for that person to come through and shake everybody's hand in the meeting because it's how we greet each other. It's how we welcome each other. And it, it's really an important part of our day. So um, just keep that in mind with um, shaking hands, how important it is and um, how to use it properly. Now, something else that we frequently do, especially as Christians, is we see women hugging each other and we see people hugging each other. And now, I would urge caution with that. I'm not saying don't hug somebody of the opposite sex that you're not married to, but be careful with that. Um, it Jealousy doesn't do anybody any good. So be careful that when you're hugging somebody, you're not creating a problem for somebody else and you're not creating an appearance of evil by hugging somebody else. I, I mean, I love to hug my friends. So uh, male or female, I, I love to hug my friends, but um, in a church setting, it's something that we have to be careful of because it, it's not about us. Um, you know, it's, we, we wanna represent Christ well, and we don't wanna give um, anybody cause to um, use hugging um, to create division in our churches. So just use, use your judgment on that. Um, be careful with that. And um, just, just be careful. And also, um, you are the face of your church. The moment that you interact with somebody, you are the face of your church. So if somebody's walking up the street and they see you, you are the face of your church in that moment. You, you represent your church to that person. And, and in turn, then you're representing Christ to that person at some level. So keep that in mind when you are, um, particularly when you're at church, that you are the face of your church. And so your appearance, your attitude, um, how you greet people, how you say hello, um, how friendly you are, what you're talking about, all those things um, can reflect on your church. Now, when I first started going to my church, um, I was a lost guy. I had long hair, earring, and I looked around and I realized in that first service that I was there that the men of that church didn't do that. So I went home and that week, because I had decided I was coming back, I cut my hair, removed my earring and never wore it again because I didn't want my appearance to reflect poorly on the church that I was going to attend because I knew just me standing out there, just me walking in through those doors, people were going to make assumptions about this church um, that I, I planned to attend based on my appearance, my actions. So I changed how I dressed, um, I, I removed the earring and um, because I, I wanted to the, the church to, to look good in the eyes of uh, the neighbors. So um, it was just something I saw, something I did. And one of the other things that uh, is, I believe, kind of becoming more and more common is that our local social media presence is also reflects on our church. So how you conduct yourself, um, particularly on the local groups um, in your town, will also um, reflect on your church. Um, I've seen the comments from people um, in the city that my church is located in um, about other people that go to my church. And so it, it caused me to realize that even your social media presence can um, affect the appearance of your church and you are the face of your church, even on social media um, for your local social media pages like Facebook. Now, I felt as an usher that um, I should be focused and that I should be um, I don't know, almost stoic. And, and, and I realized 
um, thanks to <laughs> one of the one of the dear ladies in, in our church that um, I, I was going about that all wrong, thanks to her and her husband. Um, we were out to a missions banquet dinner and I was sitting, me and my wife were sitting next to this couple. And the husband told me that his wife thought I was mean based on how I carried myself, the look on my face and all of those things. And he was very adamant about how strongly she felt. And she was a little embarrassed that he said it, but I tell you, I praise God that he did because it changed how I do things at church, how I conduct myself. Because if people think that you're mean, if, if people think that um, you're unapproachable, how can you be a blessing to them? Um, it, 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 it's counterproductive. So I, I weighed that very carefully for a, a few weeks. And then I talked to my pastor about it while we were on a flight to Nebraska. Um, and I just, I told him that I was going to have to be a little, little goofier maybe, um, and, and a little more uh, jovial than what I felt was appropriate because if people won't come talk to me, how can I be a blessing to them? How can I help them? Um, how, if they're, if they're in need, how can, how can you be there for them if they're afraid of you? Um, so be approachable, um, smile, be kind. Um, you know, like I mentioned last time, walk part way to them just so that they feel that you care, that love, that, that they matter, they're important and, and let them see that. And, so for me, I had to, I had to smile more and, and joke around a little bit more, so I would get beyond that. And because, um, so look, it, it, we're there for others. We're not there for ourselves. It's not about us. And if we can't be a blessing to them, then then what are we doing? Um, so anyway, yeah, I was I was very convicted of that, and. Um, I really praise God that that woman told her husband that and that he um, cared enough to tell me. And it, it changed my entire ministry as an usher and greeter. And, and, and in many ways, it changed my life as a Christian because I realized that um, while the Christian life is serious and, and, and things are very serious about it, you have to be approachable. Um, so anyway, pay attention to that, make the necessary adjustments that you need to make, um, in order to be approachable and be a blessing to people, help them out, um, be kind and love them. So, and, and remember, it's not about you. Um, none of it's about us. It, it's not about me as an usher, head usher, greeter. It, it, it's about how we can help those at our church that day, um, how we can help the ministry of our church, how we can help our pastor and the other ministries um, that are going on that day. And we're a ministry of helps. And so um, just remember, it, it's not about us. It, it's not about you. It's about helping others and, and doing what we can for them. Um, something that, uh, has always been very frustrating for me because uh, I ran a lot of construction crews uh, back in the day. What is, is tardiness and people who are late? Um, I really struggled with that one a lot, and it would really make me angry that um, with the people who were habitually late. And I know it frustrates others as well, um, not just me, but. <laughs> Over time, again, uh, God convicted me of that, um, that I was wrong to be so frustrated. Um, and because I, I know that at times I let these people feel that, feel my frustration in their being late. And, and how did that help them? Um, how did it help them to 
um, want to be there that day. Um, gosh, if, if we're going to treat them badly um, just because they showed up late, why show up at all? And um, so it, it, it's something that I've had to work on. I still have to work on because uh, it's, it's one of those things that really, really does bother me. I, I make uh, every effort to be early, um, not even on time. I want to be there early, ready to go. So let's not be the reason that um, others don't come um, because of the way we treat them because they show up late. And maybe they have a reason for it. Maybe they have a rough time getting out of the house in the morning. Maybe they have um, a spouse or a parent or a child or somebody that they're caring for, something that we don't know about. And we should just praise God that they're there. I, I, I mean, honestly, it just, thank God they're there. Um, and um, I, it, uh, I'm actually getting a little teared up about it because it just, we want our church house full. Um, so let's not get in the way of that. Let's not get in the way of God. Let's not get in the way of the preaching. Let's not get in the way of Christ um, working. And let's be kind even to those who are late. So, um, it, it, and I know it's tough. I know, because <laughs> it, like I said, it's something I struggle with all the time. But um, just remember, um, praise God they're there. You know, they, they didn't have to come that day. They could have stayed home. So praise God they're there. And, and help them when they get there um, so that they feel like, hey, you know, this person's glad I'm here today. And maybe, maybe something will change and, and they'll be able to be there on time. And maybe we can be part of that catalyst, something to help them to be there on time. Um, anyway, give that some thought. It, it, it's something that really uh, I, I still, I, I struggle with. So um, anyway, give that one some thought. And now this one might just be a pet peeve of my own, um, and it may not be uh, as important as I think it is, but most of us don't know how to take um, being praised, and most of us don't know how to um, actually be thanked for something we do. And I think that we lessen the effort of the person um, who's thanking us or who is giving us praise. Um, so don't be dismissive when somebody thanks you. Um, you made a difference. They noticed it and they want you to know that they noticed it, that, that you, you did something for them and, and they want to thank you for it. So um, allow that, allow them to thank you for it. And don't just say, yeah, yeah, sure, um, you know, it, whatever, um, actually be grateful that they came to you to thank you. And, you know, it's, it, I don't know, like I said, it may be a pet peeve of just me that I see that, um, but I feel like we're dismissive when people thank us. And um, we also don't know how to take praise because most of us grew up not being praised and, or, and so we don't know how to um, accept praise or give praise. And praise is very important um, to us as people. Um, ultimately, it's, it's, we're just trying to serve the Lord to the best of our ability, and I get that. But people need to know that they're doing all right. Um, and they need to know that you see them doing all right too. And I don't mean, you know, running up to somebody every week and saying, hey, good job, good job. But genuinely, when you see somebody do a good job, let them know, just, it's not that hard. Just, you know, hey, I saw that, you did good. Um, thank you for that. Um, let them know somebody noticed that um, they're actually um, doing well and it helps them. So uh, anyway, just, uh, you know, let them know that 
you saw them do good, praise them for it and give credit where credit is due as well. You know, I mean, it's, I, when my ushers have an idea and they come to me with an idea of something that they want me or my greeters and that they want me to run by my pastor as a change that we might want to make something that a call that I can't make on my own. Um, then I will go to my pastor with it. I will not tell him whose idea it was until I find out his reaction. Um, because I'm not going to throw them under the bus. Um, if it's something he doesn't approve of, something he doesn't really like or care for, or, you know, he may think that it's silly, um, then I'm not going to tell him who it was. I'm not going to tell him that it was suggested to me by one of those, one of my ushers or greeters. Um, I'll take the hit on that. I'm okay with that. But if he likes it, then I tell him that, you know, it, who it was that made the suggestion, um, because I want them to have the credit for a good idea. But I'll also, I'll take the hit for it if it's not. Um, and I'm okay with that. And, but I want them to, in turn, um, get that attaboy or that, that praise for a good idea. And so um, anyway, just when you have opportunity and you see somebody do good, let them know. Just it, it, it's easy. Hey, you know, good job. Um, just let them know what you saw, that you, you saw them doing good and that you and acknowledge that. So um, it'll be really, it'll be good for them. And it'll also be a blessing for you. So and um, one of the other things that I struggled with a lot was on days that uh, uh, I woke up and I was in less than a great mood. And so I would show up to church and I was kind of in a foul mood and I really didn't want to be, I didn't want to engage and talk to people and be around people all that much because I was just having a bad day. Um, <clears throat> something from work, um, something on the way to church, you know, but I realized that it's not fair um, to those we're trying to be a blessing to at church to take our problems there and put it on them. So on those days when I'm having a rough day and I'm really struggling and being kind and being friendly, it, it, it takes work at that moment. Um, then my response when somebody asks me how I'm doing is I tell them that I'm looking forward to being blessed. And I try to turn um, that negative that I've got going on into being a blessing and, and being a blessing for them and changing my view to be more positive also. Um, so looking forward to being blessed because once you get in there, once you're inside that auditorium and you have the opportunity to sing hymns and participate in the preaching um, by listening and your amens and those things, you'll find that you are blessed by the time you get there um, and by the time that it's over. So look forward to being blessed. Um, use that as um, if you have to, as a tagline um, on those days and um, or come up with your own, something that's you, something that works for you. And uh, I, I always prefer to uh, um, tell people just use your words, you know, find, find you, use you and, and what fits your personality. So um, anyway, with that, uh, we'll end tonight's session, but um, think about those things. And if you have any questions, comments, or ideas, um, you can go to my website, aka joebrewer.com, and you can contact me through there. It, I'll get an email through there from you. And um, let me know um, if there's something that you think I should uh, address in the future, or maybe in a, another edition of my book, something that uh, needs to be uh, addressed, let me know. I'd appreciate it. But anyway, thank you for your time. Um, I hope God blesses you in your ministries. 
and uh, uses you in, in people's lives. And um, anyway, but let's pray and uh, we'll call this one uh, done for tonight. Father, thank you for um, this opportunity that uh, we could get together here. Um, pray that you would just bless us and use us in the lives of all the folks that we come into contact with. And um, whoever may be watching this, I pray that you might just bless their ministry and use them in the lives of people that they come into contact with as well. And um, pray that uh, you would help our churches to grow, help us to make a difference for Christ. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks again and have a good night.